the life of an evangelist, we spend a lot of time on the road and a lot of time at places like this getting fuel. More important than fueling up your physical mode of transportation, your vehicle, is refueling it spiritually. Good way to do that is through your prayer life. Today on the broadcast, we're talking about Thy Kingdom Come. Hope you enjoy it. God bless. Welcome to the broadcast today. Thank you for spending the middle of your week with Bible Tracks broadcast. We are going to begin right now with a short reading from the book On Prayer by E.M. Bounds. This testimony, this passage just blew me away. I need to share it with you. Dr. Adam Clark, in his autobiography, recorded that when Mr. Wesley was returning to England by ship, considerable delay was caused by contrary winds. Wesley was reading when he became aware of some confusion on board and asking what was the matter, he was informed that the wind was contrary. Then was his reply, let us go to prayer. After Dr. Clark had prayed, Wesley broke out into fervent supplication that seemed to be more the offering of faith than of mere desire. Almighty and everlasting God, he prayed, you have sway everywhere. And all things serve the purpose of your will. You hold the winds in your fists and sit upon the floods of water, and you reign as king forever. Command these winds and these waves that they may obey you and take us speedily and safely to the haven where we wish to go. The power of this petition was felt by all. Wesley rose from his knees, made no remark, but took up his book and continued reading. Dr. Clark went on deck and, to his surprise, found the vessel under sail, standing on her right course, nor did she change again until she was safely at anchor. On the sudden and favorable change of wind, Wesley made no remark. He was so fully expected to be heard by God that he took it for granted that he was heard. That was prayer with a purpose. Man, oh man, what a thought. To be heard by God, not to gain some materialistic need, not to command God for the purpose of feeling more powerful than the one who can actually grant the request, but to be in such a close relationship and communion with the God of all eternity that he hears me when I pray. That's my prayer. That's my aim. That's my goal. I hope our study today, we're on discipleship study number four, on prayer. I hope it's a blessing and a help to you. We're going to jump into it in just a moment after I tell you about our ministry. Bible Tracks Incorporated started in 1938. That's a long time ago. Evangelist Paul Levine is the founder of our ministry. So many great men have led this ministry. My predecessor, Pastor Mark Smith, Good man, godly man. One of the things I most appreciate about Pastor Mark Smith, I've made mention of this before, but it still blows me away, his attitude. On turning the ministry over to me as the new executive director here, all I sensed from Pastor Mark was that he wanted me to be successful. He wanted the ministry to be successful. He wanted God's will to be done and God to be glorified. And I cannot thank him enough for that. There are so many instances, and it's unfortunate but true, of whether they be businesses or ministries where the outgoing generation, the previous generation, almost seem to harbor a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of angst towards the newer, the younger, those that come in behind. But I never once even got a whiff of that from Pastor Mark Smith, and I'm so very thankful for that. If you would pray for him, he's doing a phenomenal job pastoring a church in the mountains of Pennsylvania. He actually has the opportunity to interact with some Amish folks there. He recently ordered some of our German tracks, if you could believe that, to pass out to some of his new Amish friends there in Pennsylvania. Good man. I hope to have him on the broadcast sometime soon to do an interview, connecting the past and present of Bible tracts as we look towards the future. You see, our ministry puts out millions of gospel tracts every year around the world for 
free. We do that because people just like you are so kind to partner with us financially. We'd love for you to consider doing that. You can find out all sorts of things about our ministry on BibleTracksInc.org. That's B-I-B-L-E-T-R-A-C-T-S-I-N-C.org. We'd love for you to contact us that way. Now, if I can, let me tell you about this track that I have with me right now. It's called Have You Found Rest? This is one of the longer tracks that we have. The reason for that is, is that it's very detailed. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know God, the Son of God, Jesus, He can provide you with a simple invitation to rest. So often, our world is run ragged. You ever heard of the rats race? People running to and fro, scurrying here and there, but never really feeling that they accomplish anything, and definitely not attaining any sort of peace or rest. God offers peace and rest. If you are listening right now, and you don't know of that which I speak, but you'd like to. Would you go to our our website and order this tract right now? We'll send it to you for free. If you're unfamiliar with our ministry, go to our website and order a sample packet, one each of every tract that we put out completely free. We'll ship it to you for free. We don't charge anything for that. We'd love to be a help that way. Now let's turn our attention to prayer. Discipleship study number four. Again, you can contact us and get those discipleship studies on our website. We talked about the fact that not everyone knows how to pray, and that's not a mark of shame. That's not a derogatory statement. Just as little babes, little children don't know how to speak when they come out of the womb, Christians, young Christians, sometimes, unfortunately, even Christians that have been saved and have accepted Christ a long time ago, don't know how to pray. It's because they're out of practice. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is so very important. We're looking at the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer as it's often called. We are in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6. We'll pick it up at verse number 9. We're going to concentrate on verses 10 and after. But let's begin Matthew chapter 6. Join me there. Maybe you might need to grab a notepad, a post-it note, a pen, something you can jot some notes down on. Maybe grab your phone, open it up there, open up the notes section. I believe something that we talk about today might be a help to you. Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 9 says this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let's review what we talked about. Our Father, my Father, the fact that we can call God our Father is so very amazing. Which art in heaven. You know God is higher and greater than you and I. Hallowed be thy name. If you want to be encouraged sometime, do a Bible study on the names of God. They're plentiful. They're many. One of my favorites is Advocate. Another one, Faithful. Another, I Am. You'd be well off by doing a study of those names, but hallowed be thy name. Then we get to verse number 10. Thy kingdom come. You know, we should let God be on the throne of our lives, we should want God to not only rule on earth and his principles, his biblical convictions passed to us through the Bible, we should want those to hold sway over all the earth, but more so, we should want him to set up a kingdom in our own hearts, minds, and lives. It's hard for God to hold any sway in the world when he doesn't hold any power over you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you often pray for the Lord to have his will in your life today? Pray something like this. Let me forget what I want to do and be only interested in your plan and your will. We have to read God's word to know what he wants, though. So when we pray that, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, don't pray that ignorantly. After you pray, after you spend some time, 
talking to God. Pick up your Bible. Maybe even consider spending some time in the Bible first. The Bible does an excellent job as a prayer book as well. There are so many prayers in the Bible, so many verses that can be rephrased into holy prayers. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse number 11, give us this day our daily bread. We're not just talking about the physical sustenance that you and I need. We need to pray for wisdom to deal with a lost and dying world. We need to pray for strength to deal with the troubles and tribulations, the turmoils that will constantly attack us. Pray for power. Pray for the needs of today. List your other needs, desires, and wants. Give us this day our daily bread. Be specific with God. Don't be general. Don't just pray for a minute and a half and expect God to be be in some sort of communion with God. Make it an effort. Be effective with your prayer. Verse number 12, and forgive us our debts. It's amazing how much praying led up to this moment. So often we begin with one of two things. We either begin with confection of things we've done wrong, or we begin with things that we want immediately. And you'll notice that we're over almost halfway through this verse right now, and we're just now getting to give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. The confession of sin. You should be able to confess sin in detail. You know why? Because your sin offends God. It irritates and bothers and frustrates the God of all eternity, and it should bother you as well. You should be able to enumerate on a moment-by-moment basis and know when you have sinned. It's really easy to know if you have the Holy Spirit in your life because you should feel a pang of guilt. You should know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was not pleased with what you just did. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You should pray for those that have hurt you. Do not let bitterness creep into your life. Bitterness is a poison that we drink ourselves, hoping that it'll hurt somebody else. Friend, do not let bitterness grow. Root it up. Pull it out of your life. It's going to be a daily struggle. Paul said, I die daily, meaning he has to crucify the old man. He has to put down his flesh the way he wants to be about things. He has to to work on that every single day, and so will you, and so will I. But it would help if you use this model prayer. You know, if you understood there in verse number 12 how much we are in debt to God, it would help you and me forgive those that are in debt to us. Don't hold ill will against others when you've been forgiven for so much. God has been so good to you. It's the least you can do to be a reflection of that to others. We're going to continue in discipleship study number four of prayer tomorrow. I want to thank you so much for your listenership. Have a great day for his glory. God bless you and your family.